What do these sockets have to do with today's video? I'm going to tell you when we come back, so don't go away. Hello everybody and welcome to Fat Guy Productions. I am Paul coming to you as always from beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. Now in one of my most popular videos, it's gotten over a million views, I catch a lot of flack for the tools I use. I hear, oh, it must be nice to have all these tools. Oh, it's easy to do this when he's got that many tools, blah, 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 blah. All right, look, I admit I'm the kind of guy who jumps in. I don't just jump in with both feet. I, I go full body into everything I do. So when I take something on, I want the tools that I need to do the job the right way. So yes, I do buy the tools that I think I need or just that I want. And I understand that not everybody can swing that. So today, in today's video... I'm going to show you a project that needs minimalistic amounts of tools. It's fun, it can be profitable, and you really don't need a lot of stuff to do it. Anybody can do these. We're talking about making bent wood wood rings. It's going to be a lot of fun, so let's get right to it. This project starts in the kitchen. I need a big container to boil water in. I can go ahead and get that going while I prep the wood I'll need for this project. The wood you'll need is a thin wood veneer, sort of like I have here in this variety pack. I'll put a link down below. These are very thin slices of real wood for things like inlays and marquetry, but we're going to be using them to make a ring. These sheets are 12 inches long. Some come in 9 inch lengths, but those are very short for ring making in my opinion. I'd steer away from them. I'll pick out a sheet to make my blanks from and cut some long strips along the grain. Some woods are better suited for this than others. Woods with long straight grains work the best, but I'll also run some burl through today as well. Make your strips about two to three times wider than the width you're looking for. Having extra width in the blank will help you when you hone your finished ring, and it'll help you get the best final look. Once you have your strips cut, go ahead and drop them into the water and boil them for about an hour. Make sure you watch your water level so it doesn't evaporate down. A word of warning, use a potter pan that you can throw away or that you can scrub with an SOS pad because the wood can stain the metal. While the strips boil, we can go ahead and gather the other things we're going to need. You will need some rubber bands, some sort of a tube. For me, I like to use deep sockets. They come in different sizes, and I have a bunch of them out in the garage, so they're perfect for this. I like to choose a socket near to the size of the finished ring, or just slightly smaller for this first step. After about an hour, fish a strip of wood out of the boiling water and tightly wrap it around the socket. Go slow and wrap the wood as tight as you can. Then secure it with a nice big rubber band. Do several at one time so that if one fails you still have others to work with. Once they're all wrapped we can leave them to dry for about 24 hours. With the wood now dry, we can go ahead and take off the rubber bands and get a chance to see what we have. They all came out nice, and surprisingly, so did the burl piece. I wrapped it as carefully as I could, 
but they're notoriously hard to do. They can be very brittle, and they can actually have pieces fall right out of it. Pick out a piece of wood to use and reverse the roll. I take what used to be the inside end of the strip and I lay that on the edge of my finger so that I can sand the edge down to a nice taper. This will save you a lot of work on the inside of the ring later on. Once done sanding, we're ready to laminate the layers. Find a tube, or in my case, a socket, a bit smaller than the final size of the ring. You can use some masking tape wrapped around it to finalize the size. Next, we'll go ahead and wrap a bit of wax paper around that, and we'll go ahead and secure it with a rubber band or a small piece of tape on the end. For making these rings, you're going to need a very thin super glue, some accelerator, some rubber gloves. Also, you'll need to cover your work surface as this can get really messy. Now here is a personal preference moment. Some people roll the entire thing tight first so that they can make sure that it is straight and as tight as possible. I'm going to be rolling this a little bit at a time and gluing as I go. I begin by lining up the wood strip on the socket and wrapping just enough to hold the edge down. Now I'll give it a quick blast of super glue and wrap just past where I put the glue and then I'll hold it tight while the glue sets. Once locked in, I will glue and wrap, glue and wrap, and glue and wrap until the entire thing is wrapped tight. The wax paper should allow you to slide the wrap off the socket. If the wax paper comes off with the socket or is kind of stuck to it, don't worry about it. It's fine. It'll all come off when we start sanding things down later.
With the wood glued into a tube, we now need to saturate the entire thing with CA glue. Make sure you saturate every bit of the wood, and you can use some accelerator to lock it all down. A word of caution here, this does visibly fume. So work in a well-ventilated area and be sure to wear a protective mask. With the ring blank now formed and dry, we can go ahead and start to make it look like a finished ring. I'm going to cheat here and use my bandsaw to cut off the rough wood edges. If you don't have a bandsaw, it doesn't matter. Any saw will do. You can even just sand the excess away. Once I got these cut down, I could see that I had some gaps in the wood where the cyanoacrylate didn't flow down. So, after a little bit of sanding, I will go ahead and recoat these and resaturate these with some more CA glue. Now that we've saturated any dry spots and filled any gaps, we can go ahead and do a little bit of finishing work here. Again, I'm going to cheat and use my sander, but you really need nothing more than just a sheet of sandpaper here. I'm going to start by smoothing the surface of the ring, paying close attention to where the veneer ends as there's going to be a little lip there. The goal is to just get a finished ring blank. I can worry about shaping it later on in the process. Okay, so I wanted to show you uh, these blanks here. I've got uh, five of them here. And every one of these was made during the making of this video. So when you saw me uh, uh, boiling wood strips. I was boiling many wood strips. When you saw me wrap them to dry, I was wrapping several. When you saw me uh, gluing them and cutting them and sanding them all, I was doing all of these at the same time. Um, the reason I'm talking to you about this is to, to tell you that, you know, uh, it's easy to do multiple rings at the same time. As long as you're in the process, it's super easy to make a lot of these. And also it helps make sure that if while you're wrapping one, the wood splits, you can toss it aside and not worry about it. Um, if you're doing one and pieces come out of it, or if you get a bubble in it, whatever, it just shows you that, you know, you can... Uh, do multiple rings at the same time, and you're gonna come out with a lot of these. It works out great. And it also shows you, like, for instance, okay, this is the, uh, where's the burl one? Okay, here's the burl one. And I'm really hopeful for this one because I've never been able to get a burl one to work. And this one is actually working. Uh, but when I wrapped it, I got this big bubble in it. And um, that that's why you make them so much wider than you need because after getting rid of that bubble, I'm still left with a really good sized ring for Amanda wear. Once we've finished sizing and smoothing the blanks, we can go ahead and start to give the ring its final shape and finish. I have some expanding rubber mandrels I use for making coin rings. But if you don't have something like this, you can simply put some tape around a socket and use it to get a snug fit on the ring and then chuck up the socket in your drill and start spinning it around. I start by using some 220 grit sandpaper to smooth the ring face flat. Once I'm happy with that, I can go ahead and start to profile the ring, either nice and flat or maybe give it a fat tire look.
If you have a lathe, you can chuck the ring up in it and use that to spin it as you sand the inside of the ring. I don't happen to have one, so I'm just gonna wrap some sandpaper around a slightly smaller socket, and then I'm gonna stick it in the hole and go ham on it. Be sure when you're sanding, soften all the edges of the ring to ensure comfort. And now for the fun part, applying the finish. A simple fast way to do this is apply a few drops of CA glue on a shop towel and then starting on the inside make a quick pass applying the glue to the surface. Do this fast so you don't end up gluing the paper towel to the ring. Once the inside is done we can go ahead and make about 20 or so passes on the outside. To do the outside surface, start by applying about a dozen coats one after another. Put the ring in whatever you're going to use to spin it, put a few drops of CA on your paper towel, and just quickly spin a coating on the outside of the ring. Let that dry and repeat for about a dozen coats. For the last eight or so coats, apply a nice wet layer and immediately hit it with a couple blasts of accelerator. This will give it a really deep and shiny finish. After finishing with the glue, I like to buff the ring out with a little bit of polish and then finish it off with a little bit of Renaissance wax, but that is totally optional. And there you have it, one beautifully finished wood ring. Wood rings are super fun, super cheap to make. They make fantastic gifts. Any man would love to have one of these. They're very, very comfortable, they're very light, they look great. It's just a really fun, easy, and very beneficial project. Anybody can do it. And like I said, you don't need a lot of tools to pull this off. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, click subscribe. Be sure to click the little bell and you'll be notified anytime I release a new video. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. And I'd especially love to hear if you'd like to see more on making wood rings. If you do, Put it in the comments so I can see it and make sure that I bring you that. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. I hope today is a fantastic day for you, filled with successful new things, innovation, stuff that you didn't know about, and just things that put a smile on your face. This is Paul from Fat Guy Productions. Until next time, be good.